Today we're going to dive into the mediator pattern by looking at a chatroom style communication system for the AI agents in my project. And we're also going to take a look at an example from a subscriber project I saw recently where there were a lot of violations of the law of Demeter. A mediator reduces complex coupling in objects by becoming the single reference point. I like to think of it as the air traffic controller. None of the planes flying towards the airport know about each other, but they all know how to contact the central point, which decides what information they can have. Let's start by building a little AI agent chat room. The mediator pattern forces the objects to collaborate only through the mediator object instead of directly with each other. It's often used in building UI systems to promote reuse of elements, but it has applications in a lot of other areas, including networking. Anytime it's becoming hard to change some classes because they're tightly coupled to other classes, the mediator may be the solution. The concrete implementation of the mediator doesn't matter too much. In fact, mediator implementations are almost always different. The thing that's always the same is that the mediator becomes the central point of collaboration. This first example is similar to how I first learned the mediator by building a chat room, except I don't want to make a chat room for people. I need to build a system that will allow my AI agents to distribute payloads of information. Okay, to start with here, I've declared an abstract class for a new generic mediator where T is any component. In this first example, I'm going to be mediating between entities that are all the same type. So I'm going to keep them in a list. Each entity will have to register itself, and when it's finished or on destroy, it'll have to deregister itself. The way that I'm structuring this mediator, I want every entity to be able to send some information to either a single entity or to all of the entities based on a predicate. Our predicate can just be a condition that's fulfilled by the func that we pass in, which could just be null. We could have nothing. Notice too that I'm using the iVisitor interface for the messages, and that's because I want to have different types of payloads that I deliver. Some could just be a string message, but it's more likely that I'm going to want to execute some logic when I'm visiting each of these entities with the message. To accommodate this, I'm going to add the iVisitable interface as a constraint for what T can be in this mediator of type T. This way, our messages can do more than just deliver a message. They can actually run some logic on the thing that's being visited. I'm just going to bring up the two visitor interfaces here. So the visitor is the thing doing the visiting. So it has one method visit. And the thing that's being visited has one method called accept. So we're going to see those in action in a little bit here. But I also have another video on the channel that explains the visitor pattern in detail. So let's finish off this mediator base class. So if we're just sending a message to one entity because we already know which one it was, maybe it's standing right beside us or something, we can just use first or default to find it in the list and then have it accept the message. Our broadcast message that will send the message to all of the entities will be just about as simple. We can do a where the target is not equal to source because we don't really need to send the message to ourselves. Then we can just loop over all of the targets that match that criteria and have them accept the message. Some of you will notice that there actually is no for each extension method for I enumerable. And so to accommodate that, we need to either make our own or actually there is one I believe that comes with Odin Inspector if you have that. So there's nothing magical going on here. We just accept the sequence and then perform some action as we iterate over each item in the sequence. I've added this and a few other extension methods to the Unity Utils repo. Back in our abstract mediator class, we're not doing anything with the predicate yet. What we could do here is just add a little extra method to just calculate whether or not the target meets the condition of this predicate. So we can have sender condition met, and this just will return whether or not either the predicate was null or the predicate is true. Then in the where clause of our link statement, we can just make sure that this condition was actually met. Well, that works fine if the sender wants to lay some conditions down, but what if we want the mediator to define some rules about who gets which message? We could add one more method here to say the mediator condition must also be met if there is one. So to accommodate that, we could just have an abstract method here that any concrete implementation must implement. Well, that's about it for our abstract mediator. Let's take a look at these messages. I'm going to call my message class payload because it's not really just going to be string messages or anything like that. The payload can have a type of T data. It may could be a string, but it could be a more complex data type too. And we'll just call that content. So for this demonstration, let's keep it super simple. We'll have a payload of type string that we can call message payload. I'll just implement the missing members here. 
That'll fill out everything, including the correct type for our content. One thing that I do want in a message payload is I want to know the source of the message. So I'm going to add one field for that. Now, because I don't have any operations to run on my agents yet when they're being visited, for now, we're just going to put a debug statement in here. Okay, so now we have an abstract mediator and we've got some message payloads for it to deliver. Let's quickly make an actual agent mediator. So the agent mediator is a mediator of type agent. We'll be taking a look at the agent class in just a moment. For now, let's implement the missing members here. So the missing member, of course, is the mediator condition met method that we have to fill out. Now, this could be a no op. You could just return true, but I have a status on my agents. So we could say we only want to message the agents that are actually active. Let's shorten this up to an expression body method. And then I also want to register my agent mediator with my service locator. And you'll see why in a minute when we get over to the uh, agent class. Now I see Copilot's made one mistake that I'm going to fix. It's not iMediator, it's just mediator. If you're not familiar with the concept of a service locator, I'll put a link to that video up on the screen and also in the description of this video so you can check it out. So for now, this agent mediator doesn't need to be any more complex than it is just like this. We can come back and add more features if we want later. So if we come over to the agent class now, I've already been working on this a little bit because this is for one of my projects. Each agent has its own goal-oriented action planning system, or GOP for short. You can see that's coming in from a GOP factory of type agent, and that's coming from the service locator. So that's all, this part is already handled. We're able to plan actions for each agent by giving it a goal through the plan actions method. But in order to coordinate between these different agents, that's where the mediator is going to come in. We don't need the agents to know about each other. In fact, there could only be one, but we want them to be able to handle messages and other data coming from other agents. So the agent needs to be able to accept visitors, which would be that message payload. And when the payload arrives, it can visit this particular agent. In order to be able to receive anything from the mediator, we're going to have to register ourselves with it. Let's store the reference to the mediator in a private variable, and we can get that reference out of the service locator. Then just below that in our start method, we can also register ourselves with this mediator. And let's not forget on destroy, we should also deregister ourselves. So what we've built so far basically amounts to a chat room for agents. How can we test this thing out? It might be useful for us to have some extra methods here so that when an entity registers or deregisters from the mediator, we could actually perform some action, maybe debug something or maybe even broadcast some kind of message. So let's make an unregistered method and we can make this actually, how about protected virtual? So here, because we don't really know too much about the entities, it's just a generic T, let's just do a no-op. But in the concrete version, we can do some kind of implementation. Just going to fix my typo here, and then we can do a version of this for the on deregistered. This will basically just be the same thing. In fact, I'll just let Copilot fill this out. There we go. Come down here, and there's our method. Okay, so now if we jump over to the agent mediator, we could actually do something with these methods. Let's start by overriding the on registered method. Here we can just broadcast a message to all the other entities that are registered with the mediator to say that this new entity has been registered. We'll do the exact opposite for deregistered. Now, Copilot didn't fill out anything for our source in the message payload, so let's fix that quickly. We'll just attach a reference to the entity in there. And then also, because broadcast is going to go to all the agents except the one that published the message, why don't we put some debug statements in here too, just so we can have some clarity. Because even if we have multiple agents, the very first agent that registers itself with the mediator and broadcasts a message won't see a message at all because it's broadcasting to everyone except them. So the debug statements will let us know when the very first one joins as well. So I've already set up some game objects with these different components on them, including two agents here. So I'm going to click play and see what happens in the debug log. So we can see agent and agent one were registered, but only agent received the message from agent one when it registered. That's exactly what we expect. Well, let's see what happens when I press stop. All right. So agent one deregistered and then agent received a message about that and then agent deregistered. So this is working as expected to be able to register and deregister from the mediator. Let's deal with sending some payloads. 
Since every agent has a reference now to the mediator, we can use the mediator to actually send bits of information to the mediator to be disseminated to whomever else is involved. Let's create a general send method here that will actually call the mediator's broadcast message with any particular message that we want. We could also have a variation on this that will actually send that predicate that we accounted for earlier. One example of that might be to only publish a message to other agents that are in range of this one. So we could set a small radius then we can create a little condition that just calculates whether or not we're close enough. We can use vector3.distance to figure that out and pass that in as our predicate. If we come up to the update method, I can actually just ask Copilot to fill this out so that we can have a key press to test sending a message. So I'll just say, if the key press one, then we'll send it to all the nearby agents. And yeah, that's pretty close. But once again, Copilot has not filled out the source field of our message payload. Slightly annoying, but also points out a bit of a flaw in the implementation. There's no constraints on how to set up a message payload. If we don't specify a source in the message payload, our debug statement breaks because it's going to have a null reference to the source.name. Let's fix this by quickly implementing a builder in the message payload. So I'll just do this super quickly here. We just need a public class of builder. It'll have a new message payload in the constructor of the builder. Let's make sure that we accept a source and set that immediately. And then we'll have a method for the optional content because maybe we'd want an empty one sometime. And then in the build method, we just return the completed payload. Uh, usually when I build a builder like this, I'll also make a private uh, constructor so that it enforces construction through the builder. Now, in all the places where I was previously saying new message payload, let's improve this by actually making a new message payload builder and passing in the options that we want like so. That'll make sure that our message payload is correct every time. I can also come over to the agent mediator class here and make that change here. Copilot will be able to fill this in no problem and just delete the old stuff and let it fill in the, the new. Okay, there we go. Let's try this out. So I'm going to hit one while they're pretty close to each other here. And there we go. They both said hello because they both have the script. Now they're too far away. I'm pressing one and nothing's happening. But OK, here we go. They're getting close again. And yeah, there we go. OK, so that's the bare bones implementation of the mediator pattern. I want to look at one more problem that can be solved with the mediator pattern. So here you can see we've got a couple classes for the hero stats for the hero's health. And the hero class itself is exposing references or instances of these through public properties. This is going to violate one of the design principles called the law of Demeter. And the law of Demeter basically says only talk to your close friends. So when you see something where it says hero.stats.something else, and you're starting to tunnel down into classes from one other class, that's where you're going to start to see real problems with super tight coupling. Now, of course, this isn't a real law. In fact, people like Martin Fowler like to call it the occasionally useful suggestion of Demeter. Regardless, I think most people agree on the fact that you can start to get yourself into some real trouble with this. So how do we deal with this? Well, one way, of course, is to start making public methods that will perform all the logic that you want on these instances that are contained within the hero class. But you still need a reference to the hero in order to do that. So another thing that you can do is actually make a class that would be like a hero mediator. And then all the things that need to access your little subsystems of the hero can just call the mediator and ask for permission or run logic or whatever it is that you need there. So that might be your UI, might be your leaderboard. If you have a mediator class that the other systems in your game can come to for information, then you can just store references there and either operate logic or provide references straight from the mediator. So in this small example, we could just take in these two references through the constructor and set them. And now potentially we can also have some interface type methods. Now not to be confused with the C-sharp interface, I just mean a way of interacting without actually going through or tunneling through the hero class to get to these other classes. Now, if we come back to the hero, we could simplify this by just getting rid of these public properties. Instead, we'll just have some private fields here to hold these references. And we'll also need a reference to our hero mediator, of course. Now, Copilot's suggesting a start method, which, you know, looks fairly reasonable. 
but we could probably do one better here. We could actually just register the hero mediator right onto the service locator. And then any service in our game, no matter what scene it's in, would be able to access it. So we could have a new line here that just registers it as a global service. Then we can just get rid of the line below it. And yeah, that's probably about it. Because it's a service locator, though, I'm going to change the start to an awake method so that other services that are looking for references will make sure that it's ready for them. Just one word of warning about the mediator pattern. Mediators have a tendency to become god objects, which means they're doing way more than they were originally scoped to do. Remember that the mediator exists to act as a central point of access for information so that the other components don't have to know anything about each other. Your UI doesn't need to know about the hero in order to get the hero stats, and agents don't need to know about each other to get message payloads. In both cases, the mediator is the only thing they need to know about. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Mediator pattern and its cousin, the blackboard, are kind of prerequisites to a lot of things like behavior trees. So I'm sure we'll be talking about this a little bit more in the future. Hit that bell icon if you want to stay on top of that, and I'll see you there.